Hey everybody, Tracking Pat, and today we're going to show you a few new shortcuts to use on the Prototrack RMX control. And so what I've done in here is I'm just going to go to the program mode and I'm going to show you that I made a program called D Pocket. And all it is is simply a letter D, but it's a letter D where I would be removing all the material that's inside of it. And as you can tell, I did it as an irregular pocket. And as I move forward, you'll see each piece of it highlighted. So I have a straight line, a curved line, another straight line, and back to the beginning point. And that's my entire pocket. But the reason for today's video is to show you how to manipulate that in the different ways and how to do that, okay? So once I have a shape or a group of events that I want to manipulate, then I would either go to subroutines or copies. I'm gonna start out with subroutines. So when I go to sub, you'll see that it gives me the choice of repeating, mirror imaging, rotations. Okay, I'm first gonna show you how to do a repeat. So in the repeats, you'll see that it wants to know what am I repeating? So it says first event number and last event number. Because this program piece that I made has five event numbers, I'm gonna start out with number one and end with number five, and then it wants an offset. So let's say that each of these pockets is two inches apart. I'm gonna use an offset of two inches. That is an incremental offset, okay? You know that because the absolute button won't work. So it's saying how far is it from the original pocket to the next pocket? So it's two inches in the X, zero in the Y. I'm not changing the rapid point or the depth. I need three more of these pockets and I'm not going to change the RPM or the feed rate or the tool number. So you'll see now on the screen, I've got four of the exact same pockets. Now the advantage to the subroutine is that every one of those pockets is going to be made exactly the same as the original. In fact, if I swipe back, you'll see that it's still a sub-repeat, so the other three are in here. Now the disadvantage would be if I wanted to change one of those pockets, I can't. Because the only thing I could do is change something in the original pocket and then all of them would change with it. Generally speaking, when I'm doing something like repeats, they are going to all be the same, so this is much shorter than happening to make four separate pockets. But I'm going to show you a different way to do that. So instead of doing this, I'm going to say delete event. Okay, so now I'm back to my original pocket, and now I'm going to go to copy, and I'm going to select repeat. Now you'll see the questions are exactly the same. So I'm going to start out with event one, and go to event five, put in my two inch offset for X, I'm not going to change anything else, but I'm going to add three repeats, right? And now I've got four pockets, but the difference is I've got 20 events. So each pocket is a separate pocket. So that means if I wanted to change something like, let's say on, let's go to the beginning of one of them. It'll be easier for me to explain. Yeah, so here's my second pocket. If I wanted to put a radius in that corner, I could come down here to the Conrad question and put one eighth of an inch in there. And you'll see I rounded off that corner. And if I wanted to put it in the next one, I could do the same thing. And yet it only changes the second pocket. The other three are still original. So when I use copy, think of it more like copy and paste. It's going to make new pieces from the original and I can manipulate them any way that I want to. Okay? So that's the difference between a repeat and a subroutine and a repeat in a copy. Okay? Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go back to my original part. So I'm going to go to edit mode, I'm going to select delete events, and I'm going to start deleting at event 6 and go all the way to event 20. It's going to say, are you sure you know what you're doing? And most of the time I do. So when I come back here and I go to the end of the program, there is my original pocket. So now what I'm going to show you is how to mirror image something. So I'm going to go to sub first, select mirror, and it says, what are you mirroring? So again, from one to five, and I can do a cutting order of either forwards or backwards. The reason for that, if you look at my hands right now, if I was to describe the shape of my hand with a whole bunch of mills and arcs, and my tool was on the left side of the cutting path, if I make a mirror and do the exact same thing, this one's going to be on the right side. So it's not going to get the same cutting pattern. So by choosing backwards in here, it's going to reverse the order of the second one so that they both cut from left to right. Now, I don't always need that, so I can put it in forward if I want to. But in this case, the thing that I have to really describe is the plane that I'm flipping over. Okay, so if you look at my two hands, there's a y-axis plane, this invisible line between them, and that's what it's asking me for. So I have a y-axis plane, and that offset is, let's say, minus 1 
from where I'm at, okay? So you notice now that there's a second pocket over there that's an exact backwards of the first one. Just like I did before when I was doing a sub-repeat, that entire pocket is inside of event number six, so I can't change it unless I change the original. But I could delete this and do a copy mirror from one through five, still backwards, over the Y, minus one, and this time I've got two separate pockets so I can change them. So you're starting to get the idea of how subs differ from copies, right? Now in this case, there's an easy way to delete this because if I delete the irregular pocket, it says, hey, you're gonna lose the whole thing and I'm just gonna say yes, all right? The last thing I wanna show you is how to do a sub rotate. Now I get this question all the time, so I'm gonna point this out first. Everybody says, why does it say rotate? z-axis and the truth of the matter is it shouldn't it should just say rotate because what they're saying is you're going to rotate around the z-axis but in reality there ain't any other way to rotate in this control so it should just say rotate so ignore that part and just push rotate okay so again from one to five and now i need a center of rotation see how my zero zero point is right here i'm going to use that as my center of rotation and i'm going to say i want to rotate this 90 degrees and I want to do it three more times. And now you'll see that I have a D pocket in all four corners, each of them facing that corner. Okay? But like before, they're all inside of event number six. So I can't change anything unless I change the original. So once again, I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to show you in a copy form how to do a rotate. Same questions, one through five. Around zero, zero, 90 degrees three more, and I've got the same thing, but now I can change each individual pocket. So by now you should have a really good idea on when to use sub and when to use copy. If everything stays the same, sub routines are much easier, especially that if you're gonna have a global change, I just change the original and all the rest are automatically updated. But if I have something that's slightly different and I don't wanna reprogram the whole part, then I use copy and I get a new piece that I can just alter without affecting the original part. So I hope this gives you a much better idea on how to use the two. They're both very, very easy shortcuts, and you'll be a pro before you know it just by using them. I have done some other videos on drilling and things like that that show when to use sub and when to use copy, and I think that'll help too, but this kind of gets you right straight to the point. So thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one, and as always, keep on tracking.